Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and another Star Wars Battlefront 3 video? I thought I would go ahead and weigh in on the rumors surrounding the potential development of Battlefront 3 and whether or not the current licensing situation around Star Wars games might affect that. Remember to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe to the channel so you'll continue to get my thoughts on Star Wars video game news and hit the bell icon so that you'll be notified when I release a new video. It really helps the algorithm know that you're interested in this content. Before I begin, let me just say that this is theory and speculation only. I don't know more information than you, I don't have anonymous sources, and I don't have a mysterious Reddit handle. Some channels seem to make a habit of releasing daily videos with enticing thumbnails telling you how huge some tiny bit of information is and leading you to believe that certain things are happening that haven't been confirmed. All I'm doing here is reading the tea leaves, trying to sift through the information that is out there and guess where things are going. I think it's fun to speculate and while the rumor mongers want to be able to grumpily say I told you so, I just think it's fun to say I called it if my guess is correct and if not, oh well, it's still fun to talk about. I'm not going to revisit the specifics of the two different Battlefront 3 rumors that appeared on Reddit recently. Suffice to say these are not reputable sources like the ones that were calling some of the content drops for Battlefront 2. The only rumor that may be credible is the one about a Knights of the Old Republic game in the works, which you can get all the details from the video linked above. Typically, someone on Reddit or 4chan will purport to have inside information about what is or isn't coming, put in a couple bullet points of safe speculation like there's a Jedi Fallen Order sequel coming, or EA has plans for more Star Wars games, and hide behind their anonymity. But let's piece together what's been happening recently. First of all, how realistic is it to expect a Battlefront 3? If nothing else, Battlefront 2's high player retention signals to EA, Lucasfilm Games, and anyone paying a lick of attention that demand for a multiplayer shooter in the Star Wars universe has never been higher. People still play 2015's Battlefront for Pete's sake. An EA Star Wars Twitter account, never very active, tweeted out that 19 million people picked up Battlefront 2 from the Epic Games Store free promotion. Granted, while on the face of things it appears that Electronic Arts made a colossally dumb decision by ending support on Battlefront 2, it makes sense if EA already knew that Disney Lucasfilm would not be renewing that license. The pandemic put a lot of things on hold, and if they thought developers might not be able to work, then I can see why they would call a halt on further development. There is also the release of the next generation console hardware to consider, which in large part contributed to their decision to focus on Battlefield. When a company makes a decision that looks colossally stupid on the face of it, there has to be more going on. And while I was disappointed, I was never mad about it. In my view, this is the price to pay for someone, anyone, to develop the next installment for the next generation of consoles. I think that it is a no-brainer to say that there will be another installment in the Battlefront series. But most people say it will be years down the road because of Battlefield 6. They assume it has to come from DICE because of Frostbite. But we're talking about a brand new game, not an expansion of Battlefront 2. The two Battlefront games we've received so far were made by EA DICE, the creators of the Battlefield franchise, and use EA's proprietary Frostbite engine, originally designed by DICE, for Battlefield. No graphics engine is without bugs and glitches, but Frostbite is notoriously buggy, with Mike Williams of usgamer.net writing in 2019, Bioware began to cut back on planned features for Anthem, like real-time weather, because trying to get them working in Frostbite was taking forever. One developer said it can take a week to make a little bug fix. Getting some of the ideas working in Frostbite required as much work as making a new engine. Mass Effect Andromeda designer Manveer Air in 2019 tweeted, Frostbite is easily the worst, most pain in the engine I've ever used in my career, and I shipped Wolfenstein off the Doom 3 tech. The exact same design in Unreal vs. Frostbite will take dozens more engineers, money, and time on Frostbite because of the way it's architected and how far behind it is from Unreal. There is a reason I chose Unreal Engine 4 as my engine for the next project. What happened was an engine that was designed for shooters had to have new code constructed for every new type of game an EA studio had to make. 
One former BioWare employee told Jason Schreier in 2019, Frostbite is like an in-house engine with all the problems that entails. It's poorly documented, hacked together, and so on, with all the problems of an externally sourced engine. Nobody you actually work with designed it, so you don't know why this thing works the way it does, why this is named the way it is. Players of Battlefront 2 will remember that every new update or patch brought along with it a slew of new bugs. Emperor Palpatine had to be removed entirely from the game at one point, he was so broken. I don't have to remind you how poorly received Battlefront 2 was at launch, or how egregious the monetization scheme was, but you may not have known that Electronic Arts CEO Andrew Wilson took a call from Walt Disney Consumer Products and Interactive Media Chairman Jimmy Pitaro, which resulted in EA pulling the loot boxes from the game. At the time, I remember telling people in the official forums and on Reddit that I thought EA would lose their exclusive license to publish Star Wars games, and in 2021 it appears to be the case. While they aren't losing the opportunity altogether, we all know now that Lucasfilm Games is beginning to explore other options for Star Wars games. In April 2020, DICE Stockholm removed support from Battlefront 2 as it turned its attention to Battlefield 6. Community manager Ben Walk was promoted to a producer role at DICE, and the mastermind behind DICE's Battlefront games, and the man who almost single-handedly revamped progression after EA's forced pay-to-win mechanics, Dennis Branval, moved on from DICE, where to, we don't know, but it looks like Epic Games has a division in Stockholm, Sweden. Throughout its development, Battlefront 2 was slow to release any new content. Part of that, in my opinion, has much to do with the Frostbite engine. As we know, Frostbite was developed for shooters, and many of the Star Wars characters do not use blasters. It seems that the buggiest areas were in force powers and lightsaber combat. If it takes weeks to fix bugs, I can imagine it takes longer to iterate, test, adjust, and refine to the point that it's safe for release. EA has long since lifted the demand that their studios used Frostbite exclusively. Respawn made Apex Legends with Source Engine and Jedi Fallen Order with Unreal Engine, so we've seen that they can have great success and profit, even paying licensing fees to use another engine. So are there any other areas where Lucasfilm and Star Wars particularly have experienced success with releasing content or using other engines? If one game has shown great success in adding Star Wars content, it's Fortnite. They've had a rather successful arrangement with Disney so far with both Marvel and Star Wars tie-ins, and when the game had lightsabers, it felt much more responsive than the lightsaber combat in Battlefront 2. Fortnite's Battle Pass system has also shown itself to be an effective and fair monetization practice with nearly every free-to-play game in existence following this model. And I think it's fair to say that Fortnite is probably the most popular video game franchise in the world right now. Now, I can hear your complaints that Fortnite looks too cartoony, and when you compare the realism of Battlefront 2 and Frostbite to the look of Fortnite, it's no comparison, but that's not the only place Star Wars and Unreal Engine have come together, besides Jedi Fallen Order. Look no further than this article from Polygon a year ago, how Lucasfilm used Unreal Engine to make The Mandalorian. The most successful and popular property from Lucasfilm in recent memory was powered partially by the use of Epic's Unreal Engine 4. We already have a successful licensing arrangement with Star Wars and Fortnite, and a marketing relationship with Battlefront 2's free promo in the Epic Game Store. We have a working relationship with the production of The Mandalorian, and we have a loosening of restrictions on the developers who will be making Star Wars games. EA's botching monetization left a bad taste in Disney and Lucasfilm's mouths, and so far, Epic Games seems to know how to do it well. Lastly, the timing of Dennis's departure is interesting. If another developer was going to work on a Battlefront 3, it would make sense to hire away Dennis Brandval for his experience and his passion in leading that team. Now, none of this directly suggests that Epic Games specifically will be making Battlefront 3 specifically, or that Dennis is absolutely involved in the franchise going forward. But I would not be surprised to find Dennis working on some Star Wars game somewhere, and I would be watching for the possibility at least that Epic Games might do something in the Star Wars universe in the future. Follow me on Twitter at BattlefrontSG or Indiana Jim. And if you like the content here, please visit my virtual tip jar at the link down below to support my further work on the channel. May the Force be with you, and I'll see you at the rendezvous.